This is a follow-up to my pallet wood headboard video. If you want to see the construction of the headboard itself, you can click the link video here. In this video, we're going to show you how we added two mason jar lights. There are many videos out there about making mason jar lights, so I won't take too much time on that. But the long and short is that I found two light socket sets with cloth covered cords that had built in light switches. I cut an opening in the mason jar lid just big enough for the socket to slide through. I drilled some small holes in the lid around the socket to allow any built up heat from the light to escape. It was here I realized I had a small problem. The type of mason jars we had had a smaller lid opening than what was needed for the vent holes to clear the socket support. So I hot glued the support to the lid and then redrilled the holes straight through the lid and supports. I can always go back later and add new jars with a bigger opening, but so far there's been no issue with how these were set up. I wanted the lights to hang freely, so I cut two square sections from a two x six, which extended the lights away from the headboard just far enough for them to hang freely. By marking a line from corner to corner on the square pieces, I was able to find the center and drilled a hole with a forstner bit that was big enough to allow the plug to fit through. Then I used a roundover bit with my router to round over the edges on the top side of the hole. This was done to ease the contact points of the light cord and the sharp edges of the wood. From there I measured an equal distance from each edge of the headboard and found where the center of the block would sit. Then directly underneath where that block would sit, I drilled out another hole with a Forstner bit that was just big enough for the light plug to fit through. I then switched drill bits to one just big enough for the cable and drilled that hole directly above the other plug hole. This allows the cable to come through the smallest possible hole in the headboard while hiding the bigger hole for the plug directly behind the block of wood. I did a quick test to make sure it all looked right and then after matching the finish to the pallets I used a couple of pocket holes to mount the blocks in place. To put everything together, the plug must go up through the bottom of the extending block, over the top, and through the bigger hole in the headboard. Then as the block is moved into place, the cable is pushed into the smaller hole. Then the blocks can be secured into place. I pulled up the slack and reassembled the lights. Since this was a personal project, I didn't do too much to clean up or finish the back side of the piece. I used some wire clamps to hold the cords in place and used some Velcro to hold the switches in place. To allow the frame to sit flush against the wall, I used the router with a half inch straight bit to carve some channels for the cords to set in. I held them in place with some gaffer tape just to make sure that they didn't come loose or move around. As I mentioned in the last video, we mounted this to wall with some L brackets. What I forgot to mention was that these brackets were hidden also. I found where the top of the frame would rest against the wall and drilled the bracket into a stud first with one side going down the wall. Then when the headboard was in place, I screwed down into the top of the frame. Doing it this way ensured that there would not be any visible bracket edges peeking up from behind the top of the headboard. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up or leave a comment down below. Again, here's a link that you can check out for the assembly of the headboard itself. And also don't forget to subscribe for many more project videos just like this one. Thanks.